toutes ces salles dynamiques, toutes ces salles gueules. Pour jouer à PES, mon frère. C'est toi pas honte. Putain, la langue. C'est une capricieuse. Putain, vous êtes en avance ou vous êtes pas en avance dans votre pays, là The summer of 2019 FC Barcelona is in Japan for their preseason tour. And the eight day long excursion is sponsored by their biggest partner at the time, the Japanese tech conglomerate Rakuten. The idea behind the tour is to further expand Barca's presence in Asia while saying hello to an old friend in Andres Iniesta who plays for Vissel Kobe. In a luxurious hotel room are two Frenchmen, Ousmane Dembele and his old friend and new teammate Antoine Griezmann. It's been just a few weeks since Barcelona paid the $140 million release clause of Le Petit Prince and stole the gifted player from Atletico Madrid. The Frenchman will need some time to adapt to his new surroundings. Luckily, his compatriot is there for a quick and smooth introduction. Unluckily, he is also there to capture this disturbing moment. There was nothing cynical about their initial intentions by any means who wouldn't want to play some pro evolution soccer with his friend. But when they couldn't manage to get their console working and asked for help from the hotel staff, things got out of hand pretty quickly and in a disgusting way. Dembele was heard saying, all these ugly faces just so you can play PES my brother. Aren't you ashamed? Little did he know that the same question was going to be asked to him shortly after his video went viral. Were Antoine Griezmann and Ousmane Dembele being racist as many believed, or did people take their particular sense of humor the wrong way? How did they respond to criticism? What was Barcelona's reaction to it? And more importantly, what was the reaction of their biggest sponsor? Welcome back to Football Files. Today, we're going to take a deep dive into Antoine Griezmann and Ousmane Dembele's controversial days in Japan and how Barca's response proved that this was make on fuck up. December 17th, 2017. Antoine Griezmann is beyond excited for the night ahead. The Frenchman has chosen a particular look for the special 80s themed party he is invited to. No one knows what kind of reaction he was expecting when posting his photos to Twitter and Instagram, but anything positive or encouraging was out of the way. As soon as his Harlem Globetrotters makeup saw the light of day, voted the third best player in the world a year before, Griezmann was walking on water. A move to Manchester United was looking more and more likely, and his name was regularly coming up in the press. After that terrible idea of a disguise, though he made the headlines in England for all the wrong reasons. Man United fans rushed to his now-deleted photo on both Twitter and Instagram and asked for the Frenchman to stay the hell away from the club while Piers Morgan was the quickest to judge and execute the Frenchman. Back in his home country, the criticism he received was less sensational yet more severe. Louis-Georges Teen, co-founder of the Representative Council of Black Associations, was calling the Minister of Sports and the French Football Federation for duty to take exemplary measures. This is undoubtedly a racist act. The Minister of Sports and the authorities of the French Football Federation need to strongly condemn these practices and take the necessary measures to ensure that this does not happen again. The man in the line of fire was not that troubled. At least he didn't look one bit. After deleting the photos from his accounts, Griezmann shared two tweets, a rather nonchalant one where he wanted people to chill out and the other containing his excuse. He was off the hook rather easily, but his next racially insensitive take was to cause him and his club so much more problems. Act one, a lingering snap. The video was never supposed to go public and for almost two years it didn't. At first, only a limited number of people saw Antoine Griezmann as he was not trying that hard to contain his smile while Ousmane Dembele was asking the hotel staff questions like, what kind of backward language is that? And, are you technologically advanced in your country or not? Apparently, the duo must have missed the memo that the game they wanted to play was developed by a Japanese company. Not just any Japanese company, but Konami. The very same company who previously signed Antoine Griezmann as a brand ambassador for another IP of theirs, Yu-Gi-Oh! The console that they were trying to play the game with was also Japanese, but hey, the fact that this was a snap by Dembele must have eased their mind about their reactions. Since by the very nature of the platform, that exchange had to be a snap, a flickering moment that will long be forgotten in a pretty short time. Neither Griezmann nor Dembélé knew that more than one person recorded the video as soon as it hit the social media platform. They found out about it with the rest of the world. Two years after that funny video was recorded, French newspaper Liberation managed to reach out to the person who shared the video years later on Twitter. In his retelling of the video's journey on the internet, the anonymous person also told why he felt obliged to share it. Dembélé had put it in his private Snapchat story on his second account, I think, and someone had filmed it. 
This person then passed it on to someone else and then one thing led to another. It fell into the hands of my friend who didn't know what she should do with it and sent it to me. So I, shocked by the video, decided to publish it. The cat was out of the bag. And now it was time for rectification. Act two, the apology. The internet was on fire about their questionable behavior. And to their credit, both Antoine Griezmann and Usman Dembele were quick to understand the urgency of the matter. Griezmann was swift and more serious this time around compared to his previous blunder. I have always been against any form of discrimination. For the past few days, some people have wanted to pass me off as the man I am not. I firmly refute the accusations made against me and I'm sorry if I offended my Japanese friends. Usman Dembele, on the other hand, did some self-damage while he was saying that he was sorry. In an Instagram story, which is of course no longer available on the platform, but everywhere else, thanks to the millions of people who captured it. Dembele said that he uses those types of expressions occasionally, regardless of the origin of the people in question. This video is now public. I can therefore imagine that it could have offended the people present in these images. Therefore, I offer them my most sincere apologies. Both players had acknowledged their fault, but that wasn't enough. Thousands of people, especially football fans with Asian origins, demanded an explanation from Barcelona. And although an explanation was provided, it couldn't be further from what people expected. Expressing their deep regret for the displeasure amongst Japanese and Asian fans caused by a video. The club hinted at a possible internal investigation and measures taken against those involved. In the very same statement, though, the Barcelona board, in every sense of the word, tried to shift the blame. FC Barcelona would like to apologize publicly to all the club's fans and partners who feel unhappy about this event from the summer of 2019, a time when the club's responsibilities fell to a board director's and executive team previous to the current, somehow, unbeknownst to the club officials. By the time they issued this unpleasant statement, Barcelona's official YouTube channel still had a particular video up recorded during the same preseason tour. This was FC Barcelona, a legendary side that rightfully calls itself more than a club. And unfortunately, what happened in the summer of 2019 was more than just a hiccup. Act 3, The Backlash. Japanese and Asian fans were not the only ones deeply hurt by the two superstar Frenchmen and the club officials' behavior. Barcelona's biggest sponsor at the time, the very same Japanese brand the club carried on its jerseys since 2016, was also upset. As a club sponsor and tour organizer, I am very sorry that the FCB players made discriminatory remarks. Since Rakuten has endorsed Barca's philosophy and sponsored the club, such statements are unacceptable under any circumstances and will formally protest the club and seek their views. Barcelona and Rakuten had signed their initial deal back in 2016, which netted the Blaugrana a handsome $64 million per year, and they had used an option to extend the deal for a year in 2020. Unfortunately for the Catalan side, Rakuten didn't pursue another deal at the end of the contract cycle. And right around the time the club was infamously indebted for over a billion dollars, and shortly after it lost Leo Messi. This lucrative deal was off too. On a much more personal level, Antoine Griezmann was touched too. Konami, immediately after the concerning videos were made public, released a statement to cut its ties with the forward. Konami Digital Entertainment believes, as is the philosophy of sports, that discrimination of any kind is unacceptable. Previously, we had announced Antoine Griezmann as our Yu-Gi-Oh! Contents Ambassador. However, in light of recent events, we have decided to cancel the contract. For countless people all over the world, regardless of their level of appreciation for football or any of the parties involved, the disturbing footage of Griezmann and Dembélé, and more so how Barcelona responded to the backlash, showed an even more disturbing side of modern-day politics. The internet was filled with videos, articles, and tweets talking about how hate towards Asian people was somehow destined to stay under the radar. If anything, let us reiterate that racism in all of its forms against any person or group is unacceptable. No one should suffer because of who they are or what they believe. Do you think this scandal was covered enough in the media? Would you qualify Griezmann and Dembélé's acts as racist? Let us know what you think. If you want to go to the other end of the spectrum and lighten up the mood a bit, check out this video where we talk about the nine times football players responded perfectly to racism. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.